Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export a model from Onshape into Autodesk CFD. Let's get to it. So we're assuming at this stage that you've got your car model complete. Um, but what we need to do is create a new part, which is going to be a box that the car goes inside. So this box is going to essentially act like the wind tunnel. So we need to create a plane to draw this box. Uh, I'm going to use the back here. So if I go new plane off this back surface, I'm going to put mine 300 millimeters from the back of the car. Okay, so on that plane, we can draw a sketch and our box is going to be using the rectangle tool 100 by 100 millimeters. Um, cool, and we'll extrude it in this direction. And we'll make it 600 millimeters deep. All right, so our box doesn't really line up with our car. So that's the next thing we're going to fix. We can right click on the box and make it transparent. So we can have a bit of a better idea of what we're working with. So I'm going to try and line up on sketch 47 here. Might put a midway point in the bottom there. And then I'm going to use the dimension tool to dimension from this midpoint to this midpoint. I'm going to make that zero. So if I look from the back, it lines up with this midpoint. I also want to set the height from this midpoint. Um, I think I want that at about 20. So again, if I look from the back here now, I should see your measurements are going to be different, of course, but what I'm aiming for is that the car is centered inside the box and that it's as close as possible to the ground. So we're simulating as if it was driving on a road here. So I'm happy with that. And we can accept. Again, it divert, <clears throat> reverts back from being transparent. So we can check it's good. What we want is for our car to be towards the front of the box. Um, most of the action that we're doing with the CFD analysis is going to show uh, on and behind the car. So having it towards the front of the box, the room behind it for us to see the turbulence works well. All right, so that is complete. Our model is ready to use. We're going to download it. So if I come to the tab down the bottom here and I click export. Now I'm going to choose the format of SolidWorks because that's um, that works best for inputting into the program. So SolidWorks, and then I can name it. Um, I think I've done one before. So F1 Schools Car 1, and I will download it. So while that's happening, I'm going to open up Autodesk CFD, and we're going to input it into this program. This program takes quite a lot of computing power. So uh, you don't have to wait after clicking things. So just be aware of that. Okay, so new project, and then I click browse and I go and find that download that I just did. F1 in schools car one. I can click open and then I can give it a name F1 car example and create. All right, so there's two errors here that are highlighted in red, which we can fix. The geometry tools box automatically opens. One of them is called edge merge. So we're just going to accept that and click merge. We should fix that first problem. The second one is the small object removal tool may be useful. So if we go small objects and then we click, we just accept the settings and we click remove, it'll just smooth out some of those junctions. All right, no other problems. So we can close this box. Okay, so a few things to do here um, before we can start completing the analysis. This box, we've got to choose what material uh, each of the components are. So if I look in unassigned, material unassigned here, these are the different parts of my car. And usually number six here, it 
highlights is the box. So if I double click on that, or I, sorry, right click and go edit, I can change or check what material it is. So for the box, we want it to be fluid and we want it to be air. Um, so that's fine. We'll apply that, accept that. Now all of the other unassigned materials, we can, we can edit them at the same time. So they're going to be the car body and the wheels, etc. So we'll edit those and we don't want them to be air. We want them to be, um, sorry, material. Nope. We don't want them to be fluid. We want them to be solid. And then we can choose, um, there's one here called wood soft, which is probably the most similar to boss wood. So we'll apply that. Great. I can also, if I want, right click on this box and go outline so I can see my car inside that box. Okay. Now we have to, I guess, tell the computer how much air is flowing and which direction. So what we can do is click on boundary conditions here. And I want to select this front face. So if I, um, sorry, edit these boundary conditions, right click and go edit. Now I want velocity. Yes. I want meters per second, which is good, but here's the speed one. So how much, how fast is the air moving through this surface? We're going to put in 20 there, 20 meters per second. Um, the F1 in schools track is 20 meters long. The cars, take approximately one second to complete the course. So 20 meters per second is about as close as we're going to get. So I click apply. Um, the other ones that I want to check, are the back here. So we want the air to flow in at the front and out of the back. So if I edit this back, I don't want velocity here. I'm going to change it to be pressure. And I'm going to say zero pressure. So all of the air can travel out the back with no back pressure, zero pressure. And again, I can click apply. The other one to just change before you go is click mesh sizing um, and just check that you've clicked automatic. So we've got automatic mesh size. All right, we're ready to let the computer do the calculations to solve. Um, well, it's called solving it as it calculates the, um, the CFD, like where are the high and low pressure zones. So we're going to come up here and click solve. Now this iterations is important. How many times does it complete this process? Um, we can start at a hundred and we'll see a graph come up down the bottom here. In my experience, it takes more than a hundred iterations to get reliable results. We'll leave it at a hundred for now and we'll click solve and that will start the process. Now this takes a bunch of time, um, depending on the speed of your computer. First, it'll come up with a number of messages down here, and then we should see um, what's called a convergence plot, where it starts plotting the X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that when we, when we see that up here. Okay, so now you can see this convergence plot um, and all of the different lines, they start pretty wild, but what we're looking for is that they even out to be um, straight horizontal lines. One's particularly interested in uh, is the Y axis. So the Z axis up and down, X will be left and right, and then Y axis for us will be um, the most important one. So that is this one here, the bright green line. So we can see it's starting to straighten out. Um, I'm going to jump ahead in time. We'll give it another, you know, we'll, we'll check what it's like after hundred iterations. If we need to do more, we just click solve again, and then we do another run and then we can um, do another 100 iterations. Okay. You can see now I've run uh, 300 iterations and my, my green line has flattened out. It's, it's pretty consistent now. I could probably do with running um, another hundred and see, check that it was in, in fact flat, but I'm pretty happy that these results will be reliable. So let's see what we can find out. One of the things you probably want to do first is look at the coefficient of drag. Um, the, yeah, it's going to be an important number for how fast your car is going to be. So I'm going to click on wall calculator up here 
And in this box, I'm going to select everything, but I don't want to know the drag on the walls. So I've got to deselect each part of this box, which will ensure that I'm only seeing the coefficient of drag on the body of the car. All right, so that's turned blue. It's just the car that we're looking at, which is great. Then I want to look at force. So I'll enable force and I want to read the force in Newtons. All the other things can stay at the same and we'll click calculate. Now we get a lot of data here, which is for all the different parts. What we really want to look at is the summary at the end. We can see the total square meter surface area of our car body. And then we've got the X, Y, and Z coordinates with their forces. So this is the one we're particularly interested in because the Y axis is this one, which is going to tell us the coefficient of drag of the car. We can see as is 1.4 Newtons. You really want to aim for the lowest number possible here in this scenario. So you might uh, use this analysis, work out which parts of your model you might be able to change and then come back and do it again and see if you've reduced that coefficient of drag. The other interesting one is the Z axis. Um, which is this one. So this is going to tell you if you have lift or downforce. Um, too much of either, again, in this context is unhelpful. So you want to have a look at um, how your car is reacting in that area. So there's a number of tools here that I could use to look um, at finding areas I could improve my car design. So if I click on planes and then I can add a plane. So this immediately gives me some interesting information. Um, so this is velocity. So the speed of the air, if it's kind of a ready color, it's moving faster. If it's a blue color, it's moving slower. So if I click edit, I can move this plane to look at how different parts of my car are interacting with the air. Um, I can also rotate it. So I can have, if I put it to 90, I can see, use it like this, look horizontally. That might be useful in identifying um, different parts of my car. I could make improvements. I might put this back to zero. You can see, particularly on the, the rear wing here, there's some, some areas where the air is moving much slower than the air above it. So um, yeah, we've, we've talked about those principles. So we might be able to make some improvements to keep the air moving over the wing longer, which might decrease drag at the back there. So yeah, the other, well, we can change the rotation axis and make this to be one and this to be zero. And then I could rotate it 90 degrees in this direction. And that might be, might be useful as well. So if I put it all the way to the front um, and I'll just close this for now, the next tool we're going to look at is traces. So if we click on traces, now I can add some traces to that plane that I've established. So if I view it from the front, I know my car's behind there and I click add. Now I can just click and drag to add a rectangle of traces. So these show how the air is flowing over your car. And again, you can move these around and look at, um, yeah, some potential areas that might, we might be able to make some improvements in. If I click edit, I can also change these to, from cylinders to ribbons, or I can change the width of the ribbons, or you can have lines. So there's some adjustability there. I'm going to leave it on cylinders for now. I could also do an animation. So if I click on animate up here, I can change how long it takes for the animation, or I can click play and watch the air kind of move over my car. You can see a lot of interesting turbulence happening at the back here with some air that's getting stuck. If I make this 10, we should see much slower progression of that, that air over the body of the car. All right, so we'll remove those. Um, we'll go back to the planes and we'll remove the plane as well. So the last one we'll look at is this ISO surfaces. So if I click on that and I click add, now it's immediately hard to see what's happening. I could click and drag and kind of look inside my car. 
my right my I guess wind tunnel that I've drawn and I can see some build up of pressure on the front here sometimes it's easier instead to make this transparent and then you can kind of look through it to see where the air is piling up in front of the car and how that's affecting things so we might be able to use this to help us make some design changes as well all right so hopefully that's given you some tools we know the coefficient of drag of the car now. Um, we've used some of these tools to look at different parts of the design and how we could potentially make some improvements. So I'd probably go back to um, Onshape, maybe create a new model. So you've got um, one model for each iteration of your car design. That way, if you make things that are not improvements, you've still got the existing design. Um, and then, yeah, see, see what you can come up with to improve on your car design, put it back into the CFD, do some more analysis and see if you've made any improvements.